Welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. I'm Jeff Allison and thank you for watching. Welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV and today you can see we got some more new parts in. Um, you see a little video clip of me pulling the engine, getting the transmission out and that's because we have the new engine. Um, so we got a new starter, uh, wiring harness and some other parts, uh, new accessories and then we're still waiting on an accessory drive setup but uh, for, the, for now we're going to go ahead and try and get this engine plugged in make sure everything still clears on the firewall if we're going to need any modifications i want to get those figured out because i want to start buttoning up all my sheet metal work i'm i'm close to having all the mods made and it's just time to start hunkering down and getting all the welding in um, i also need still need to build a center console so i want to make sure my transmission is where i want it for the final stage and all that so we're going to get all this bolted in and get started on it uh, thanks for joining us and hope you enjoy Okay, like I said, we got some new parts in here. Oh, some sensors, map sensor, it's like a cam or a crank sensor, ECU, uh, oxygen sensors. All we got is the fun part here. Let me get the zip tie off. And this motor's already been dynoed, which was the sheet I was going to show you, and I'll clip a picture of. Ta-da! How's that? Well, part of you can't even see, can you? Detroit Motor LT4, supercharged, advertised 650 torque, 650 horsepower, and uh, when it dynoed, it dynoed just under the 650, I think it was 647, um, but it dynoed over 650 torque. So what I'm going to do is get it spun around a little bit, see if we can get it bolted up to the transmission real quick, and stab it back in there just pretty I like looking at it it's got all the studs for the factory cover plastic cover on it so we either have to get one of those or swap out all these extra studs and just for regular 10 millimeter bolts but all right well let's get our cherry picker back in here and figure out how we're going to grab a hold of this thing Okay guys, well there it is. So very close to fin fitting. I'm gonna apologize for the camera moving. I'll try and edit it Start out here. It's a good idea. The shifter is almost to the hole. Probably needs to go back inch and a quarter. Maybe a whole inch and a half. Fortunately, if you can look in this gap here, and while it looks like it's just that blanket, the high pressure fuel pump, let me see if I can set that up so it'll Yeah, so you can see right back here, the high pressure fuel pump, this is a foam cover for the pump, so there's about half an inch there, um, is already just touching the firewall. So we could get a half inch, but that doesn't get us the inch and a quarter to inch and a half we need on the shifter. And then up here, 
See if I can dial you down. Yeah. So there's some shadows playing a trick here, but this is the frame member down here. And here's the edge of the oil pan, and I measured it. It is two and a half inches from the oil pan going past the, the uh, cross member. So in the end, what we need is three inches further back, uh, three inch smaller oil pan. And I say three inch because you got to have a little bit of room on it. You don't want it smacking into the, to the cross member every time the engine rocks. And yeah, we could get a little tighter. Um, but we either need a much smaller oil pan. We need to modify the firewall to get this thing in there for the high pressure fuel pump because that's what's sticking out the furthest. It would still get kind of tight, but I think there would be enough room if we just had a different oil pan. And it is tough to get in there. Well, it'd be better if I had a, uh, a tilter on here rather than just the chain. So in the future, I'll... Uh, I'll rig up some kind of tilting mechanism to, to hold the weight and tilt it. But uh, looks like stock exhaust manifolds will fit. Um, like I said, we still need a front runner kit to uh, work the, the uh, accessories and normally the air conditioner pump is down low um, compressor and this these don't come the Corvettes didn't come with a hydraulic power steering pump they were using electric power steering I, I believe or some combination of that so we'll have to have a, a power steering pump set up on here as well but first problem is besides the big oil spill is the two and a half inches on the oil pan anyway so I'll give it my customer will get his opinion and come back to this but it's a cool engine it's just got a huge oil pan on it really big but we'll just have to see what the owner wants to go with so again thanks for watching uh this will probably end up being a short video since we didn't get the engine all the way in and i'll get back with you on the next one thanks for watching allison customs project car tv like us on Facebook and check us out at allisoncustomsonline.com.